We used to call college an institution of higher learning. Going to college it used to be viewed as somewhat of a status symbol. It was a place where kids with parents who had money partied for four years while getting an education. Or smart kids who were on scholarship studying to become the next boss of the kids who spent the last four years partying on daddy's money. College used to be a place where where you were able to find yourself, where you grew into a young adult. Many kids learned how to do laundry for the first time in college, cook their own meals, learned that life is not fair. It was a time of networking, associating yourself with people that could possibly help you in the future. College used to be a place where there was a free exchange of ideas. Classrooms were used to debate policy during mock debates. The next generation of doctors and lawyers groomed in college. Colleges used to serve a purpose, but with each passing year, college becomes increasingly more irrelevant and they know it. The growth of the internet along with federally backed student loans were the worst things to happen to the college system. For decades, they have made billions of dollars off the backs of young adults, most who have no ability to pay anything but the interest on the loans. The problem for these colleges and universities is people have realized it is a complete ripoff. There is no need in saddling yourself in six figures worth of debt to obtain a degree that will get you a job making $50,000 a year. I can walk out my front door tomorrow and find a job that pays fifty grand. The internet also has a devastating impact on the supposed need for a college education. Take this YouTube channel right here for example. I don't use my college degree for this channel. I knew I was a gifted writer when I was a child. The internet has given people the freedom to find endless ways to earn money. There are actually people making a good living buying items off of Amazon or yard sales, thrift stores, antique stores, and then reselling it online. Now besides the exorbitant expense, the biggest factor bringing down the college system is the widespread infection of the woke fungus. Colleges have been infected with the fungus since the 1960s, but it took four, maybe five decades for normal people to realize just how fucked up this is. Mom and Dad, they spent 18 years raising a well-behaved, well-mannered Catholic daughter named Allison. She was a gifted student who spent her weekends studying about Jesus. The proud parents send her off to Stanford where she wants to study computer engineering. They stand at the end of the driveway waving goodbye as a young innocent Allison drives to Palo Alto to achieve her dreams. Three months later, time for Allison to come home for Thanksgiving. Mom and Dad are excited. Our baby's coming home for the holidays. Front door opens. Dad's heart sinks to the floor. Mom screams in terror. The beautiful long blonde hair has been shaved into a mohawk. Allison has a nice cucumber tattoo on her face, steroid-induced muscles. She informs her parents that she now prefers shitfuck pronouns and is no longer named Allison. My friends call me Big Al the Enforcer. For the paltry sum of $73,000 a year, Stanford will transform your innocent child into a grade-A shitfuck. Money well spent. Earlier this week, we were given another example of not only how ridiculous higher learning has become, but also how these universities are trying to brainwash your children. You send your kid to school to learn about engineering, medicine, law, but Stanford University, they have taken it upon themselves to teach your kids how to properly use language. And don't worry, don't worry. This lesson is free of charge. Earlier this week, Stanford published a list of harmful language that must be eliminated from American society. These words are no longer allowed on campus. They have revised handbooks and university publications to ensure they are in compliance. They claimed, they claimed there is a need to eliminate these harmful, outdated words because they're ableist, ageist, or racist in nature. Well, KC, what the hell is an ableist? <laughs> uh, 
An ableist is someone who discriminates against people with disabilities. For example, let's say your neighbor is a woke shit fuck. He's been 100% infected with the fungus. He gets triggered when your kids are playing outside with their water guns. Not only are guns dangerous, those kids have no concern for the environment. They are wasting water. Your neighbor is quite accomplished. He claims to be the first man in history to be impregnated by his wife, inflatable Irene. Nine months from now, he will be giving birth to an organism closely resembling Rachel Levine. With your neighbor being a stay-at-home dad, collecting woke welfare for his disability of being a complete shit fuck, he decides to start a babysitting service. You and your wife? looking for a babysitter. He's convenient, right next door. But you refuse to hire your neighbor for obvious reasons. According to the woke commandments, you are an ableist. But there are many more. Oh, <laughs> there are many more violations. The list of banned words compiled by Stanford is broken down into 10 sections. Now, obviously, I don't have the time to share all of them with you. Basically, if the word is found in the dictionary, Stanford claims it is offensive to someone somewhere. I guess they want all of us to become mute, which for some people, that would be a good thing. I don't think most people would mind if Joy Reid suddenly lost her ability to speak. Now, I'm going to share with you a few of these offensive words that I found most interesting. Let's start off with Karen. For the last few years, Karen has been used to describe angry, bitter white women. Surprisingly enough, Stanford deems use of the word Karen to be offensive. Now, I was actually shocked when I saw this. Shit fucks are usually given awards when they offend white people. Karen, though, has been stricken from the English language. Instead of saying Karen, you are now supposed to say demanding or entitled white woman. Um, I have an aunt named Karen, so what am I supposed to call her? I guess I can call her AK, Aunt Karen. No, 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 no. AK is a gun reference that could trigger someone. By the way, you are no longer allowed to say gun. You must now say tool used to emit projectiles. Elsewhere on the list, you are no longer allowed to say abort. Why? This is the root word for abortion. Saying abort could trigger a potential birthing person who was forced to terminate their pregnancy. Instead of abort, you must use end or cancel. They actually prefer cancel since they're actively trying to cancel everything. In the culture appropriation section, you are no longer allowed to use the word chief. No more police chief, no more Indian chief or guardian chief. You must now address them only by name. However, there is an exception to this rule. If they happen to be named Pocahontas, you are not allowed to use that name due to its offensive nature. Well, KC, what do we call them? Just to be safe, I would simply call them they, or better yet, just don't call them at all. Those people you see on the streets of major cities across America, you know the people I'm talking about. We used to call them homeless people, but... That is no longer acceptable. They shall now be named people without homes. Now, I'm sure you've noticed throughout this video, I've said the word trigger several times. That was not by accident. I was violating the woke commandments on purpose because triggered is now a banned word. Trigger warning, also no bueno. Instead of trigger warning, you should use the term content note. Students entering their first year of college are called freshmen. Again, no bueno. That term is not inclusive. So, what do we call them? Stanford didn't offer a suggestion. Perhaps we should call them future birthing persons. The phrase killing two birds with one stone. Oh, 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 oh. So many offensive words in that phrase. The word bird, highly offensive to Sue Bird, wife of the prepubescent boy Megan Rapino. Instead of bird, you should call it animal with wings who shits on your windshield. Stone, also very offensive to people who puff the magic dragon. Don't call it a stone. It should be hard round object used to break windows during a peaceful protest. Killing, also offensive to people in jail for homicide, murder. I mean, we don't want to offend them. The word brave, banned. Man hours now change to person hours or labor time. Now, of course, the shit fucks. We'll have to worry about that one since most of them are unemployed. 
But I saved the best for last. If you have young children in the room, I encourage you to pause this video until they're gone. I don't want to hurt young ears by saying this highly offensive term. Are you ready? When you identify your nationality, how do you classify yourself? You say, I'm an American, right? Well, not anymore. According to Stanford, the word American is highly offensive to inhabitants of the other 42 countries in North and South America. How should you describe yourself going forward? Can't use patriot to offensive. As it turns out, Stanford haven't developed a new term to replace American. But in the meantime, they want you to pretend the country just doesn't exist. This is what higher education looks like. Instead of teaching kids about math and science, they're teaching them to be silent. Instead of teaching them about outer space, they point them to a safe space. Is it any wonder why college admissions are reaching near record lows? Parents are no longer willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for their kid to be indoctrinated with this bullshit. Take the money that you're going to spend on college and start a business with it or put that money into an account for your kids to fall back on. Hell, you would be better off burning the money than giving it to these colleges and universities. But what do you think? Stanford compiles a long-ass list of unacceptable words. All my parents out there who have kids under 18, do you plan on sending them to college? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.